Here we have set up the solo variant for five tribes. You set it up just as you would the base game, except for a few small changes. Let's take a look at those changes. Take 11 blue camels for yourself. Place 11 pink camels next to the board. Take only 25 gold coins instead of 50. Do not use the bid order track or the turn order track. Use two regular six-sided dice, making sure that they are different colors. Now that we've looked at the setup changes, let's take a look at the rule changes. In this solo variant of Five Tribes, you will be confronting the Sultan Yazid, who plays as a dummy player. The object of the game is to survive the entire game and score a maximum number of victory points. You immediately lose the game and do not score any points if there are seven assassins next to the board, there are six jinns next to the board, or you cannot pay Yazid when you are required to. If you make it to the end of the game, you must have more visors than Yazid. If not, you lose the game and do not score any points. Begin the turn by rolling two dice for Yazid. The results indicate his target for his turn. The white dice indicates in which column he will strike. The black die indicates which tile he will clear from that column. If you don't want Yazid to clear the targeted tile or tiles, you can outbid him in order to play before him. In that case, you must pay the sum of the two dice numbers to the bank before playing your turn. At the end of your turn, you must then re-roll the dice for Yazid and accept the results. If the black die shows a six, Yazid strikes twice. He targets two tiles, the top one and the bottom one, available in the column indicated by the white die roll, as long as there are still meeples on them. If there is only one tile with meeples left, you must choose a second target in any other column. If the whole column is empty, you must choose two targets in any other column. If the black die shows any other number, Yazid targets a single tile. If the tile does not contain any meeples, you must choose another tile from this column, or from another column if the whole column is empty of meeples. Yazid captures meeples that are on the targeted tile or tiles. He takes all of them. Depending on the color, they have different effects. Yellow meeples are placed next to the board. They form the Council of Visors. Remember, you must have more visors than Yazid at the end of the game in order to score. White meeples are placed next to the board as well. If Yazid has at least one elder and one fakir, or two elders if he has no fakir, at the end of his turn, he discards them to buy the first available jinn. Yazid can only buy one jinn per turn. Remember, you immediately lose the game if there are six jinns next to the board. Captured merchants, or green meeples, go back in the bag. Yazid takes that many resource cards beginning from the start of the line. Discard all cards except for fakirs. Place them in his play area. Put the captured builders, or blue meeples, in the bag and perform the builder action for Yazid. Instead of scoring these points, he takes them from your personal stash. Remember, you immediately lose the game if you run out of money, even if you still have some merchandise left. You can only sell merchandise at the end of your turn, not in the middle. Place the captured assassins or red meeples next to the board. 
Remember, you immediately lose the game if there are seven ass assassins next to the board. When Yazid clears a tile, he immediately places one of his camels on it, as long as there are no other camels already there. Yazid never performs the targeted tile action. Jinns have no effect for Yazid, but your own Jinns can still be activated by his actions. For example, receiving two gold coins when he takes viziers, or two gold coins when he takes assassins, or two gold coins when he takes a Jinn. You still get those benefits. Your turn, the cleanup phase, and the end game trigger are the same as in the base game. <laughs> What did I like? The multiple paths to defeat. Managing multiple things as you try to score is a great way to add tension and decision making. If you get too selfish and just try to make your score the best possible, you are more than likely not going to make it to even count up your score. The threats are real, and they are ever marching towards your defeat. I also like how simple it is. Besides remembering which die belongs to a column and which die belongs to a row, I had all the rule changes down from the second play of the variant. All of the Meeple's effects make sense and are easy to execute. You will end up having a nice pace when resolving Yazid's actions on his turn. What didn't I like? The end game triggers too fast. I was having a hard time with the amount of rounds you actually get to play. You will usually get around 11 turns, but if Yazid rolls a 6 on the black dice 2 or 3 times, that cuts the amount of rounds you are going to get down drastically. I also didn't like the length to reset the game. This game is one of those games where your desire to play 2 in a row will be very high due to the speed of the game and the chance that you may lose before scoring. However, resetting the tiles and the meeples makes it less desirable. After putting all the meeples back in the bag and restacking and shuffling them, you almost spent as much time resetting as you did playing through the first game. Overall, this is a well put together variant. The effects within the game are very similar to the base, and the ones that were changed are changed in a very simple way. You have some planning to do and will be counting out your most effective move quite often, as the game does end fast, so you must stay on top of it. Although it may not be fun to lose and not score your results, that tension really adds to the variant and its experience. Hey, I'm Hans, and if you like what you saw, go ahead and click subscribe below, and good things will happen for you forever. <laughs>